Our next speaker is Kirk Johnson. Well, Kirk is a retired Navy commander, 23 years. He has, to me, the spirit of an entrepreneur and the heart of a philosophy professor. While his formal position is Legal Shield Director, he's an independent associate. His work spent mentoring businesses through BNI, the Business Networking International model. He spent time growing the Prince William uh, County Chamber, so he's working with businesses and growing the chamber. And he's invested time guiding youth. He's worked with the Boy Scouts of America. And it reflects his passion for helping people and leading, giving leadership. You pair this with his unique 3D approach, three-dimensional perspective on everything that he does, whether it's an evaluation or looking at leadership or looking at building a business. He's got a very interesting perspective. And luckily, he's going to give us a peek into that three-dimensional perspective today. But I find that as I look at Kirk and think about all these pieces and look at his bio, he's a very multifaceted, different kind of person and steps outside the box just about every time you try it for him. So I'm going to ask him to come up and share with us now his speech called The 3D Key for Team Effectivists for TI. Join me in welcoming Kirk Johnson. never let it rest until our good is better and our better is best. <laughs> Greetings fellow Toastmasters and guests. How many of you have been challenged to do more, to reach a higher goal, to recruit more people, to expand your clubs, to get a, to accomplish it, whatever? Okay, I'm in the right place. <laughs> a few more questions. How many belong to Toastmasters? 100%? Corporate clubs? 50 community clubs, 50, how about a church-based club? We're good to go. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Campus clubs? Nope. Nope? Okay. I wish you were my professor. <laughs> 3D thinking and 3D key. I'm going to share what 3D thinking is, and I call it that 3D key. I'm going to apply it to teams, and since you all have a strong Toastmaster background, we'll make it relevant to a Toastmaster. And then share some specific examples, real world, on how it applies, and give you a specific call to action. 3D thinking. To become a 3D thinker, first you've got to figure out what a one-dimensional thinker is and what a two-dimensional thinker is. Take back to a little bit of geometry. A 1D object is that straight line. Length, no width, no depth. It's a one-track mind. Little kids are great one-track thinkers. They can do something 24-7. If they didn't have to sleep, they would continue to play video games seven days a week. And so on and so forth with kids. We went to school, secondary school, college, and they transformed us into two-dimensional thinkers. What's a 2D object? It's that piece of paper you're holding in your hand. It's got length and width and no significant depth. It's flat. It has two perspectives. You've seen it, they hand out that little essay book, except for this guy over here. It has eight pages, and the question goes on the board. An issue, and the challenge is, are you for it or are you against it? Fill up the book. Man, I could never fill up those eight page books, because I was done, for it, against it, right or wrong, black or white, hot or cold, good or bad, I like it, I don't like it. Ugh. Hmm. If I had heard about 3D thinking prior to doing that essay test, I could have did it. It's just a shift in perspective. We kind of do it already anyway, but we haven't formalized it. So what's a 3D thinker? Well, what's a 3D object? Like this projector right above us, it's got a length, width, depth, rectangle box. It's a, something with volume. So when you take that 3D object and say, well, how many perspectives do I have now, like that projector? There are six of them. There's a front, there's a back, there's a top and a bottom and a left and right, and each of those corresponds to a way of thinking. If you take that overview from the top down, you get that 10,000 foot orbital view of the, of the issue or the problem or the team. If you go down underneath of it, you get a foundational perspective 
It could be literal or fig figurative, either one. You go front and back, out front, you've got the vision out there, and if you go behind the object, you get a historical perspective. Those who can't remember history are condemned to repeat it, and what prevents you from repeating lessons, those lessons or lessons learned? <coughs> What's left? The sides. The sides, very good. So you can do my speech for me, that's good stuff. So on the left side of your brain, which typically is the more logical side, numbers, metrics, things you measure, rules, policies, that kind of stuff. On the right side, a little more creative, a little more fun. I like to put the word relationship over there because the, the R kind of works out pretty, pretty nicely. So now let's take a look at what we're all thoroughly familiar with, and that's our team, our home club, our Toastmaster club. That's our team. We shift those leadership teams every six months, sometimes once a year, depending on whether it's advanced or weekly or not. So now, what roles correspond to which perspectives? Well, let's go above, get that big picture of the team. We can see how many members. The executive committee probably makes decisions as a group. Cool stuff. If you go underneath of that team, we got the foundation of TI, Toastmasters International, almost 90 years old, global, and support truckloads of support. Left and right, left and right. On the creative side, the fun side, we have lots of room for that. We give the objectives, but we don't specify the topic of the speeches. So the speeches are wide open. The table topics tend to match the theme of the meeting. And there's all kinds of fun you can have with the table topics. The VPE can go a little extra more creative and actually pull meeting, all kinds of extra meeting stimulants like backwards meetings or, or whatever. Then we switch over to the other side of the brain, the more logical side. I just covered the right side, the more fun side. The more logical side, we know it's an agenda-driven agenda. We know that there's objectives to accomplish. The competent communicator manual with 10 speeches and then a bunch of advanced manuals to move us all the way up to, to, to the distinguished Toastmaster. But there's also the competent leader stuff. That's laid out quite well. Front and back. The vision of Toastmasters, there's more than one statement, and that vision varies depending on whether it's a club perspective or an area or a division or a district. But in essence, it's to make effective communication a worldwide reality. That's still in print in, in our stuff. To help people achieve their dreams, as we heard in our earlier workshops this morning. Lessons learned from the past, the number one fear, still to this day, is the fear of public speaking. People would still rather jump out of an airplane and skydive than get up in front of a group of people and, and speak publicly. And we've learned that lesson. Some of the subtle lessons learned are, if folks have any trepidation whatsoever about speaking in public, guess what they won't do? They won't step up and lead. So the manuals used to be combined, used to be communication and leadership, but they separated the manuals out to give extra emphasis on the leadership side of the Toastmaster program, because it was a little more subtle, low key, to make that happen. Good stuff. Now, some specific examples for how it, how it, it actually worked in, in public. Because you as ambassadors of Toastmasters, wherever you go, are gonna inspire other people to start clubs. And the, some of the lowest hanging fruit for organizational development, whether it's a small team or a large organization, is available as low hanging fruit. The price point of $4.50 a month and a one-time $20 fee is ridiculous. And, and it is absolutely by far established as the world's best personal development organizational development program on the planet. Are we, we're in the mecca of Toastmasters right here in the Metro DC area. Not even California, where the headquarters is located, has clubs that meet seven days a week. Right here in the metro area, with roughly 300 clubs, we eclipse that. Pentagon, IRS, Congress, 
churches, Booz Allen, the airport, all have clubs. Community clubs are right up there with them. I checked into headquarters for Naval Air Training when I was still an active duty person. And the first Gulf War had just ended, and at every war there's always a deficit. So the first place they cut was the military. And you know what happened. The top brass stays in place, and the people who actually make the work happen stay in place, and all middle management gone. Went from a staff of 200 to 85, and only 25 were military. Whoa, no more managers, no more coordinators, no more what? And the job still had to get done. When they, when they looked around for folks to step up and take a leadership role without the pay of being promoted, <coughs> nobody stepped up. Oh. A shrewd admiral implemented a Toastmaster program. Within three short months, those technicians and, and administrators started stepping up and said, you know, I'll be a team leader because we created teams instead of managers. New admiral checked in and said, hey, Commander, why are we still paying for this? And I said, name me your top 10 people. Nine out of 10 were Toastmasters. Whoa. He said, I get it. I saw a person come in and say, there's 10 minutes left, and I want the third person to have a chance to speak. <laughs> so, all Toastmasters, team leaders, if you apply 3D thinking, most folks will quit trying to find a silver bullet or quit taking the I like it or, or I don't like it approach. And they will self-evaluate what's missing from whatever's making that team succeed by applying 3D thinking. So remember, good, better, best. We never let it rest until our good is better and our better is best.